Um, because it's hard out here. And a lot of people don't fucking realize that. A lot of people think that we're just out here every night. Like when I talk to people that don't tour or have never been a part of the music business and they're like, you know, you know, you got groupies backstage swarming you and you're just, you know, every night doing what you love to do in front of thousands of people and you're on a bus and, and you, you know, you're probably on a private jet and do you ever need security? I get that all the time. If you ever need security, let me know. It's like, motherfucker, like, like, I'm. what do you think that I do? You think I'm like Jay-Z or something? Like, a lot of times when I do tours, I'm in my Nissan Sentra, like, driving my fucking self, listening to satellite radio. Shout out to Rude Jude. Um, <laughs> hyena in stores. Go get the book. Oh, yeah, get fucking hyena, man. So, it's really difficult. And everybody, without getting into specifics, everybody that I know that's a part of this is going through it right now. Yeah. I feel like I'd be okay had I not made the decisions I want, but like I said, I st- like I also invested a large amount of money in making a film this year. So it's like, I want to do movies. I want to be on TV. Like this year, via signing Strange and bringing my name to Strange, you know, I was on, I've been on Revolt TV, MTV, like more visible. I know that I could play the underground game and make continue to make six figures a year and a cool six figures, but I took the pay cut because same thing I did when I went to Warner because I feel like I need to impact the mainstream. Like there needs, and it's obvious in the news, there needs to be a more positive image of the black male in mainstream America. And my contemporaries aren't cutting it. You know what I mean? And shout out to Kendrick and everyone of the like that's doing that. But um, there needs to be more people. And I feel like I make simple, basic, everyday rap that motherfucker. If you're white, you're black, you're whatever, you could relate to. Dude, (laughs) you made a song First of all, before I get into this, this is what this wasn't your first. How many movies have you you've made? I made a couple short films. This is my first full length film. But called- that, but but you got it. I'm going to tell you. You gave me this advice probably 12 years ago. You said never let anybody forget about the shit that you did before. Don't just let people find out about whatever project you're on and then think that that's your first shit. That's your right. first project. So one thing I can't do is I can't. You've made you've made films. You made films when people didn't, when YouTube wasn't even around. You could, we didn't have DSLR cameras like I'm using here. And like, yeah, nah, you I, made a real I'm indie film. I'm an independent film. rapper with most videos. I was making indie rap videos Absolutely. when nobody was watching the shits. And um, I learned that from Sunspot Jones. But yeah, I make movies, short films, and you know, like Walk Like a Man, my first short film, sold 15,000 DVDs, you know? But thanks to my homies that came in on the soundtrack, you know, Slug gave me a bunch of songs. I Self Divine, Brother Ali, Blueprint. They donated shit. And then I had a remix of Hustle with John Cena and E40. And like, things helped sell the movie. But people still come to me today and watch that movie. So. But do you feel like by doing some of these things, because one of the problems I have with where things are at in, in like modern day culture is all of these things that cats like you or tech or. Sean Slug when you were doing that nobody had ever done anything like it now everybody does that shit all the fucking time and they don't have any idea that there were people that were actually being innovative and creating like I'm going to do a movie and I'm going to put atmosphere on the soundtrack and I self divine is going to be on the soundtrack and I'm going to release it my fucking self like dude you guys these cats you couldn't have done this shit without, without and, like... And I think, but the same thing, like, I have to give it to, like, like I said, Sunspot taught me a lot, but also, like I said before, like, I'm not of this culture. It was new to backpack culture, but I got it from Master P. He had I'm About It, which yeah. was not the best acted film, not the best film film. <laughs> Dude, that was but a good But the soundtrack was... was amazing. It had, like, E-40. It's the first time I heard Brother Lynch Hung was on that. Had A Ball and MJG, Bone Thugs. Like, everybody's on the soundtrack. So I was like, shit, I'm gonna make it student film but you give it up to master p whereas i think that people that are like new cats around now they don't know about the impact that you or strange or master p no limit had on on independent music we came from an era we pay homage to the people that we got our ideas from and this day it's just the it's the standard and it's how it works and it's there's nothing we can do about it but i i just wish that like the new kids that's the kids that are watching this that i wish that they would learn about the people that's paved the fucking path that they're on right now and and 
Yeah, it's not. You know, I, you know. Hopefully, time will tell the story, and I have people that won't forget. And I, there's people in these camps. Funny enough, you know, that work with some of these people. Like my assistant works for some of the younger people, and my homeboy's brother works for them, and lets them know. And you know, like, and I, honestly, like, shout out to like to Odd Future. Like, I rep for them because. They, you know, like I threw paid dues, and now they're throwing a similar festival. Crazy, but it's nice to know that they're inviting me to perform at their festival. Like they respect me, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, it's an example of them paying homage. Like I don't know if it's them paying homage. I don't like. I don't think Tyler likes my music for a fucking fuck all. But like when he sees me, we talk. He's respectable, and we hang out. And he's a good dude. And he's like, I know, I may, I know he may not like it, but he knows that people like it. So here, Merce, here's he broke real bread with me. For me to come perform at his festival. Like, he threw a real festival. Like, he it, was a, it was a real... Your festival had a great carnival. It was beautiful, man. I am I get choked, not choked up, but, like, I'm excited to talk about it because it's amazing what he's doing. And so I wear my Earl sweatshirt. I wear my golf wing shoes because I represent for those kids because they give back the love. And it's like... And it's do you nice feel like they're, they're a part of reshaping black imagery in, in, yeah, in, in the music industry? I feel like, yeah, because, like he says, like, to me, Tyler's on some white boy shit, like, crazy white boy shit. Like, what? But so that's how my homies thought of me, like, oh, cuz, weird, like, why you ride a skateboard and shit? Like, what the fuck? Like, ugh. Do you ever think about the kids that are coming up on Odd Future that are going to be like, Tyler's going to be in the back of the bus going like, yeah, you know, I when I came up and we were doing this and I pay respect to Merce and who are the kids that are coming up on Odd yeah, Future gonna that are going to like, they're going to push Odd Future out of the way. It's how it works. And, and there's... That? It's there's some 13 year old kid out there that's like masterminding right now that's that's and i think that's dope. i think because he could be a fucking mexican kid or he could be a, a kid in china right now like stealing the internet just to watch odd future videos or watch episodes of loiter squad like hip-hop is so far reaching that it's you know after barack even and he brock is one of them but every president from now on will know who tupac is absolutely that's crazy that's like, a crazy thought we never thought that this shit would be reaching as far as it is so and they're reaching even more via the internet like i'm reaching this meet these people via tapes and cds and shows i was doing now there's the internet so there's so much like i won't say like dissension but hip-hop being promoted via every network we don't know how it's gonna affect the world 30 years and then like of course my kid literally i, I adopted a kid he's a year and a half he's out skateboarding with earl like taking earl's skateboard and earl's playing with him and him and tyler and earl are like playing with skateboards and shit hanging out flatbush zombies is giving him pounds and like he's in it and he's gonna know and respect it he's watching red bull bc1 trying to break dance like he's gonna be and i like feel like hip-hop is gonna rule the world and oh, I feel like it already does. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he, like, uh, North Korea, as terrible of, of a place as it is, they're the biggest importer of Hennessy in the world. Like, that's North Korea loves Hennessy. Like, that's crazy. They're isolated from the world. It's a terrible, reprehensible place, and they import more Hennessy than everybody, because yeah. that's rap shit. Like, hip-hop... Tupac lives on. <laughs> he made it. He made Thug Passion. Like, that's... That's crazy. I didn't know that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I want to uh, extend my respect and appreciate everything that you've done. You've been a great friend for a long time, and we're going to continue to do this and be on this journey together. And yeah, wherever you turn into, man, books and blogs. It is what it is, dude. We're, 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 all, we're trying it. Yeah. I saw you do a fucking film. I saw you and, and Tommy and all, you guys were releasing your own albums. Like, I was like, I don't got to go to a studio. I don't got I can just make this myself.